Welcome back everyone, Professor Rhett Smith for ProtonGuru.com. We're going over lesson 6.14 today, and in this lesson we're talking about the preparation and reaction of nitriles and some reactions of amides as well. In our last lesson we talked about how some of the other carboxylic acid derivatives can react with hydride sources. We took an ester, reacted with dibal H to make a aldehyde, or we took carboxylic acids, esters, acid chlorides to make alcohols. Well, if amides react with lithium aluminum hydride, the process starts out, of course, the same as many, many of the carbonyl reactions we've seen. Your hydride nucleophile, of course, do the nucleophilic addition. And here I'm showing the O coordinated to an aluminum, right? Maybe an aluminum with different ligands than this, but the point is that you've stabilized this O to the extent that you can have the nitrogen donate its lone pairs to push this off as a leaving group. A couple reasons that this happens specifically instead of pushing the nitrogen off. First of all, the oxygen aluminum bond is much stronger than the nitrogen aluminum bond would be. Stabilize this as a leaving group. Second, it's easier to take a lone pair away from a nitrogen being less electronegative and give electrons to an O, which is more electronegative. That's one of the things that makes the reactivity of amides a little different from an ester or something, right? In an ester, they're both O's, so you don't have this difference like that. So that's why you have that O based group acting as a leaving group here. Well, that leads to this strange species with a double bond N. And at this point, you have a polar pi bond with a plus charge on nitrogen. You really want to push electrons to that nitrogen so it becomes neutral again. You accomplish that by having a second H of the lithium aluminum hydride, which has four H's to give. And in the end, then you get an amine where you've put two H's from the hydride nucleophiles onto the species. And it would look something like this. You may even see cases where people write one lithium aluminum hydride to some type of acid or just writing neutralization to make everything neutral. So the way to think about this is, well, I know I add my first H nucleophile. It's what pretty much all the carbonyl reactions do that we've learned so far. And then the second thing I do is I'm going to have this be the leaving group instead of the nitrogen. So if I'm thinking about doing a type C reaction where I have a nucleophile replace a leaving group and the pi bond, I've actually gotten rid of, in this case, the entire double bond O, which I actually call a type D reaction for the purpose of just sorting these to study. And you've lost the whole carbonyl oxygen and replaced those two bonds with bonds to the H-based nucleophile. Now there's one pretty important reaction that's specific to primary amides. Primary amides all have the two H's on the nitrogen. And if you use a reagent that's pretty good at dehydrating or taking water off of reagents, like P2O5, or many textbooks use SOCl2, so definitely know that either one of those two would work. These can take the two H's off the nitrogen and the O off the carbon. Now it's got a mechanism that's pretty complicated. We're not going to go through it for the purpose of this course. But if you think about the carbon now needing two bonds and the nitrogen now needing two bonds, then it makes sense intuitively that you would make a set of two new bonds between the carbon and the nitrogen. This is how you get a CN triple bond. And this is a species called a nitrile. We learned a little bit about some of the reactivity of nitrile functional groups when we talked about benzene compounds. But a new reaction I'd like to introduce here that nitriles can undergo is the hydrolysis. Nitriles can undergo a lot of reactions that are similar to what carbonyls do. And the net product of this reaction is actually to form the carboxylic acid. Well, how is that going to happen? Well, remember that the reactivity of a carbonyl compound is often driven by the CO double bond being polar. One way to activate that pi bond to reaction is to protonate it by reaction with an acid. So you see that we have an acid catalyzed hydrolysis for the nitrile as well. So we take the lone pair on the N and donate it to the H and get this now activated nitrile species that I've called 1. Now you have a plus charge on nitrogen, so you really would like to push electrons to that nitrogen. That's accomplished by the lone pair of a nucleophile, water, pushing and doing nucleophilic addition to the pi bond from the carbon to the nitrogen, just like if we had a CO double bond that was protonated and we had water 
we could likewise do the nucleophilic addition to that. Very similar analogous type of pathway. Then of course we have this positively charged oxygen, not very stable. We can deprotonate it. We can show that happening assisted by another water molecule, for example. We have protons that can protonate the nitrogen, and we would have a species like this. Now, once, of course, you have a plus charge on an oxygen or a nitrogen, you'll notice that we tend to follow up with pushing electrons towards that species. So likewise, we have this kind of imine-looking species, and we push the electrons to that nitrogen. So we have an NH2 group here. Well, at that point, all you have to do is deprotonate the O to make an amide. Say, so, well, you just told us that the final product was a carboxylic acid over on this page, not an amide. But remember, if we're heating this in acid, we already know what happens when you heat an amide in water with an acid catalyst. You're going to get the carboxylic acid through the amide hydrolysis we talked about just a couple lessons ago. So now you see how you can go from a nitrile all the way to a carboxylic acid through this hydrolysis process. Now this analogy between CO double bonds and CN pi bonds does not end with the hydrolysis of nitriles. You can also take lithium aluminum hydride, which we think of as a source of H minus, and that will be of course attracted to the partial positive end of the CN pi bond. Now in this way you will create initially a compound that looks like an imine. Of course in the presence of lithium, or the aluminum salt, you can have coordination of that nitrogen to a metal. Let's draw it like this. And we still have a polar pi bond from the carbon to the nitrogen. So we would expect another hydride nucleophile to do this type of reaction. Now we have two H's overall added to that carbon. And we have the nitrogen, and it would have to have a couple of metals on it at this point. When we do the neutralization, the metals will come off and we'll have protonated the amine. So we can get an amine from a nitrile by adding two H nucleophiles in place of the two CN pi bonds that we start with in the nitrile. This analogy doesn't end even with nitriles. You may remember that we can take a ketone, react it with an amine, primary amine, an acid catalyst, and we can make an imine. Well, we didn't really talk about reactions that imines could do other than hydrolysis to go back to the ketone, where we had an excess of water with the acid catalyst. But the imine also has this polar carbon-nitrogen bond. So if I was to take an imine and react it with a hydride source or an R- source, let's just say First step, R lithium. Second step, H plus or neutralization step. Well, we expect the R minus, it's kind of our abbreviation for the nucleophilic piece of the organolithium, like this. So, okay, we get a negative charge there. We've added an R group down here to that imine. We do neutralization by protonating that. And in that way, you get an amine from an imine as well. So a lot of the chemistry we talk about with CO pi bonds is also applicable conceptually to any type of polar pi bonds, whether that's a CN triple bond, CN double bond. Just keep that in mind if you see any unfamiliar cases and you're trying to reason through what may happen in these cases.